I'm the third born son in the family, and when I was born, the doctor told my father, well, Fred, you got another ball player. But he didn't get a ball player. He got a dancer. <laughs> but I want you to know, I don't think that made him any less proud of me. He came to as many of my shows that he could possibly make, and whether they were good or bad, and some of them were real stinkers, <laughs> he always left beaming. But in Kentucky, basketball is like a religion, and my father was a devoted follower. He played basketball at Sturgis High School, eventually became a coach there, and later in life was a sports journalist on the side. And you could just hear the passion in his voice when he called in those stories. Now, even though Daddy never pressured me into playing ball, I knew how much it meant to him, so I thought I would try out. And I lasted about three or four practices, and then I quit. Now, I want you to know that my parents had this strict motto, if you start something, you better darn well finish it. But when I quit basketball, neither one of them protested in the least. Oh, now I went on to do church plays and 4-H talent shows. I even took my first jazz and tap class out at Miss Vicky's dance studio. But it wasn't until I went to Murray State did dance choose me? I was a theater major and I was in this class called Movement for the Actor. And I did my first movement study and it was like I had discovered this new language that I was compelled to learn. So I slung my body into every dance class imaginable. Now the great dance artist, my idol, Martha Graham said that dancers are the athletes of God. But I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> there were days that I felt like I had made a pact with the devil. It was torture. I thought, you're never gonna be good enough. And then I was babysitting my nephew, Chad, and I lay him in his crib, and I go over and I put on some music, and I look back, and he instinctively begins to dance. And that moment changed the path of my entire life. I started believing that dance was for everyone. And I would interview folks about their lives from all backgrounds and ages, and they would tell these incredible stories with beautiful, detailed gestures. And that became my inspiration for my choreography. Well, it got me to thinking, I need to interview my dad. He was in the early stages of Alzheimer's. And I thought if I don't ask him some questions now, I may never know the answers. And in particular, I wanted to ask him about the integration of Sturgis High School. I knew it was the first high school in Kentucky to integrate, and I knew Dad had been instrumental in the desegregation process, and I was so proud of that, but most people just didn't want to talk about it. But I knew Daddy would tell me the truth. So my best friend Kim sets up a video camera in my parents' kitchen, and the stories start to flow. He tells me the infamous story about the upstanding doctor's wife who brought her monkey to the school and tried to register her monkey for classes. How it got so bad, they called out the National Guard and put tanks on the schoolhouse lawn. The spread in Life magazine, and I said, Dad, did you ever feel like you were in danger? And he said, oh, son, some of these knuckleheads would call the house and threaten to burn it down, but I didn't pay him any mind. And I said, well, Dad, why did you do it? Why did you put you and your family in harm's way? And he said, well, son, it was the right thing to do. But I was scouting for the basketball team, and I went over to Dunbar, <laughs> the black high school. 
And I was watching these talented young men play, and I got to thinking, if I could get a couple of these guys to come and play at Sturgis, and I stopped him. I had my father on this humanitarian pedestal where I worshipped him, and it still came down to basketball. In a word, I was crestfallen. So we packed up and we went back to Knoxville, Tennessee, where we were living at the time, Kim and I. And we had this community-based dance company where we invited people of all ages, abilities, and backgrounds to share their stories and their talents through dance. And when they told those stories, dance became a tool for social change in that community, and it made a big difference. And now that I'm a little bit older (laughs) and a little bit wiser, I hope, I think if I had let Daddy finish his story, that's what he was trying to tell me he was doing with basketball. When I was born, Daddy didn't get a ball player. He got a dancer. But I don't think that made him any less proud of me. And I know that I was born to a father that was a basketball fanatic. But that doesn't make me any less proud of him. Thank you.